good morning. Today we're at Byers Hill, which is near Abilady, just east of Edinburgh, and I've come to have a look at the Hopeton Monument. Now, most, of, most people that watch my videos are from Fife, and they'll think, Hopeton Monument, isn't that near Cooper? And you'd be right. And this monument is almost exactly the same as the one that you'll find just north of Cooper, but with one major difference, you can climb the tower. So, I'm looking forward to this. This is the information board about the uh, monument here. So apparently we've got to get to see woodpeckers, gorse, and uh, Scots pine. But here's something that I quite like. Path services. No, that's not what I want to see. Uh, visitors intending to climb the 132 steps at the top of the monument are advised to take particular care and carry a torch with them. Guess what I have. I came prepared. Okay, so after a steep climb up from the car park, we found what we came to see. Of course, there it is. I always worry these videos are going to be a letdown, but nope. We found what we came to see a gorse bush. I think it deserves a thumbs up. Well, it doesn't really. Gorse is shit. Everybody knows that. But there it is. When we visited the Tower of Johnson back in April, that was 9 meters tall. This is 29 meters tall. So it's going to be a fair climb to reach that uh, height up there. I think there's only one thing left to do, and that is to go inside. Let's climb up. Now supposedly there are 132 steps here to climb, all of uh, varying quality. I'll give you a quick look at the steps at the top of the tower here. As you can see, it very quickly descends into darkness. But you do get a few windows here and there, so the torch isn't actually completely necessary. At least it's easier to go uh, without it and just use your hands to guide yourself up and down the stairs. But I've always enjoyed spiral staircases, although this one is slightly more labour intensive than some of the ones I've been on recently. fun adventure climbing up there. 132 steps, 29 meters in height, and I believe the tower was built in 1864. No, 1824, sorry, 1824. Well worth doing. Take care of these steps because they are quite precarious in places. A few of them are kind of this bit here, it's down to right here. You can see where they patch some of them up, but yeah. I definitely take care going up. We will need a torch here and there, but for the most part you can just about navigate without. So it's easier to kind of climb holding onto the edges than it is to worry about flashing the torch at everything and all that stuff. But no, I definitely give this place a thumbs up. Well worth checking out. It's a bit of a drive, so it's a shame the weather wasn't quite perfect for it. But I'll come back here at some point and get some really nice shots from the top of the tower for you. Okay, so the next stop on my day out is Abilady. I've been meaning to come here for quite a while because there's something very interesting on the beach that I'm hoping to see. But there are a lot of factors at play here, such as tide times and everything else. I think this is pretty much low tide at the moment. And this bay is quite expansive, so I don't know if I'm going to find what I'm looking for, so I'm not going to tell you what it is just yet. Following the path around here, it's very pleasant. You can see the uh, Kukenzi power plant in the distance there. But there's a very nice path down here. But I've still not found my way onto the beach yet. I will eventually. 
but I believe this was the first local nature reserve to be established in Scotland back in 1952. So if you like birds, then this is the place to come. It's about to get dark. As we enter this very natural cavern. Because it's not really a cavern, it's just some trees that have gone over the top of us. But still, things like this add interest to any walk that you go on. And so far this one's been a very pleasant one. So we've had a very long bridge, and now we've had a tree tunnel. And unfortunately we seem to be moving away from the bay, which is not what I wanted. Summoned upon this uh, small pond here, so this is quite pleasant. And there appears to be uh, tank traps over there as well. So signs of uh, war related stuff if you're interested in that kind of thing. Just to put this area into some perspective for you, that's uh, Eric Law over there. And straight ahead of me is the Hopeton Monument that I was up earlier on today. After walking along for what seemed like a long, long time, I finally made it onto the sands. Now, low tide is about 2 o'clock today, it's now about 1 o'clock. So that gives me about an hour's worth of opportunity try and find what I'm looking for and I believe it's down near the tidal mark so somewhere down there so I've still got a long way to go and I have to hope I actually find it after all this but uh, here it goes let's see if I can actually locate what I'm looking for in this vast sandy area this is one hell of a landscape it honestly feels like I'm lost in the desert it just goes on and on and on Thankfully if you turn around you kind of ground in reality again with the uh, Houghton Monument and Abilene in the distance. Still, this is one vast area of sand. Pretty much nothing can wipe the smile off my face right now because I've actually managed to find them. I honestly thought I was going to have to give up on this and go home. But no, here's one of them. These are former submarines that were dumped here and they were used as military target practice for a while. Now imagine being on one of the crews that had to go inside this small confined space here to work. It must have been horrible. But there's two of these, there's this one here, and then there's one over there as well, which I'll go and check out shortly. I think the only thing that could wipe the smile from my face here is if the tide starts to come in. But like I said, I think I've got until about two o'clock, and it is now about 10 past one. I never thought I'd be getting this excited over some junk on the beach. But this is special junk. Halfway between there's this uh, big lump of what looks like war-based concrete again. So you can see the other submarine over there, it looks like there's more to it than the one I first found. And again, Kenzie Power Plant in the distance. And if we look over there you can see some of the hills of Fife. Specifically, the Lomans just on the other side of the ship. It's still quite misty today, so whether or not you can make that out, I don't know. I feel very skeletal. Kind of like rib cages, but made out of uh, metal. You can still see a lot of the detail on them. I think these are submerged for uh, large chunks of the day as well. There you go, right into the rib cage. You can see shells and all sorts of collected on the inside there. This net must have been the way in, possibly. Like I say, that's a horribly confined space to have had to have worked in. Here you can see, because this one's not quite as deeply underwater, you can see right into the uh, inside of them properly. Let's come down low, give you a nice shot in the middle there. side. Again, you can probably tell just how cramped a space this would have been. There we go, there is the front of it. Well worth coming down here. But you have to make sure you get the tight times right because 
this bay is apparently lethal. As soon as that starts to come in, you've maybe got about five minutes to escape. So those submarines were a great find. I honestly thought at some point along that journey I was going to have to give up and just admit defeat because you have to trample through a lot of boggy area, a lot of uh, grassland, you have to then navigate the beach and there's loads of it as you saw in the video there. It just goes on and on and on and I honestly thought I'd never get to them. But there we go, I spotted something in the distance, headed towards it and it happened to be exactly what I was looking for and it definitely deserve a thumbs up. Two thumbs up because one thumb up for each submarine. So I've now found myself in Ockendini, just south of Edinburgh. And what you're looking at here is a former goods platform at Ockendini Station, which was on the Pennycook Branch Railway. And the line would have come in from that side over there into the undergrowth. Now if I come across here, that is the old railway line there, it's been converted into a footpath. And we can walk along the former platform. And as you can see, at the end of it, there is a tunnel. That's one of two tunnels that you meet within about a quarter of a mile of each other. You also cross the River Esk twice. So we'll come along to the end here and give you a good view of it. But there's a lot of features here within a very short space of time. So there we go. That is the Bogoda Bridge going straight in the Ockendini Tunnel. And I'll give you a full tour of that in a second. This is us crossing the bridge, which is now part of a cycleway, so no doubt I'll get run over from behind, so I'm not paying much attention to what's going on around. And the tunnel itself is only 74 yards long. You can probably just see light poking in from the other side there, but it does have a slight curve. And it basically it just passes underneath the road and a wee bit of extra land. Here we go, this is us in the Ockendini Tunnel. It's got a nice echo to it. And you can still see various bits of railway paraphernalia attached to the sides there. And because it's part of the footpath, it is lit throughout. And there's not too much graffiti down here. There's a wee bit, it's kind of amusing, so I'll show you that when we get there. And when you come out of the other end, the currently there used to be an old mill down here, which is currently being turned into housing, so there's a lot of construction work taking place. But you can still track the old railway line to the next tunnel, which is about a quarter of a mile from here. I'm surprised these are still here. These are here in 2012 when I first came to this tunnel. But there we go. Big Dick and Little Dick. I don't know why somebody chose to put the small one next to the big one there. But uh, there we go, maybe somebody's just overcompensating. So that is the Ockendini Tunnel. Only about two minutes walk from the Ockendini Tunnel is Old Woodhouse Lee, otherwise known as Firth Tunnel. It's one of those tunnels that's acquired a couple of different names. Now this one is dead straight, but it is 111 yards in length, making it slightly longer than the Ockendini Tunnel. But because it's straight, it doesn't look that way. The tunnels are very similar. Uh, like this one is marginally longer, but not by much. And you can see that some of the brickwork looks like it's been touched up at some point. Possibly when it was converted for uh, pedestrian and cycle use. Now here are some tunnel relics. Uh, namely the old refuges. But because it's a public tunnel, they don't want people standing in them and scaring people. So they've uh, blocked it up. So that's my Halloween prank gone. And what do we have here? Nice big thing. Presumably used to carry cables through the tunnel back when it was uh, still used for railway functions. It makes quite an impressive noise when somebody comes through on a bike. They're nearly there, nearly the other side more refuges for you. Another cable hook type thing with its insulator pot still intact. We're about to run away again but we're nearly at the other side now so. So 
that was all Woodhouse Lee Tunnel. We'll come to the end of these uh, wing walls here. And I'll give you a bit of a tour of what the area is like. So there we go. It looks more grand from this side. I think it's because it's darker so the tunnel stands out a bit more against the landscape. Here we go, here's the final feature on this railway I want to show you. It is the Fur Viaduct. And to show you how close all these uh, features are together, if I turn the camera back around again, there's the Firth Tunnel in the distance. So that is the might of the Firth Viaduct behind me. One of many features within a small area on the uh, former Pennycook Grand Railway. And like I say, you get this viaduct, two tunnels, and an iron bridge all within about half a mile of each other. So what more could you ask for coming to this particular part of the world? I definitely recommend checking it out if you're ever south of Edinburgh and 